One year I was invited to be a bridesmaid in 10 weddings. I realized then that I really enjoyed being the girl with the clipboard. I'm always looking for ways to save the client money, effort, energy, time. They don't really know where to start in the planning process and sometimes they think that a planner is just going to be too expensive and outside of their budget and often I think you can't afford to not have someone helping you. It's really important to stick to a timeline. The planning process really happens in two bursts of energy. 200 of their nearest and dearest variables. We create table settings out of nothing. No one feels like they were forgotten. You assume everything's going to go perfectly, but that is not always the case. Most couples are getting married a little bit later, so they may be paying for the event themselves rather than traditionally having the bride's parents pay, and they are doing things simpler, less excess, and more indicative of their personalities and their personal story. A lot of couples are making their wedding planning a family affair, whether that's their first choice or not. Most times I meet with the bride and the groom for our initial consultation, and typically after that, my conversations are with the bride. My role is to support the bride and groom and to make sure that their desires and their vision for the day happens. So although your caterer is more than capable of releasing tables to the buffet or letting the DJ know what's next on the list, they are mainly focused on the food. When you think about your wedding day, what comes to mind? And I like to hear from both the bride and the groom what's important to them. Sometimes they're surprised at each other's answers. Is it the venue? Do they want to dance until dawn? The next step, of course, is what they can afford and how we can incorporate those desires into an event, a beautiful, beautiful event that matches their budget and their expectations. And you need to keep your vision in line with your venue. Engagement parties can be held anywhere. So one thing that I would suggest, as I do with a rehearsal dinner, is that you do something that is not at all like you have in mind for your reception. So wedding planners, as you are consulting with your clients, have them choose a month that appeals to them rather than a specific date. A lot of venues offer discounts for those days, and if there is another event on that Saturday, you may even be able to share rental costs. Now, Although you have access to get all of these rentals yourself, it's really a better idea to have your caterer be in charge of those rentals. I appreciate photography and the artistic element and it really is a gift and an art. And my contribution to that arena is the time. So I try to help the photographer stay on target and not follow um, his whims um, in a way that would disrupt how the entire event is going. My caution is I think it's very risky to give a stranger a microphone at your wedding. Sometimes their idea of what's appropriate for a wedding may fall more into your very cheesy category. If you're going to have a friend MC at your reception, it's great to give them a script and a timeline if writing doesn't come naturally to them. We would provide them with a timeline of the reception and what their role would be is just to inform the guests of what's next. I'm not trying to micromanage this event. It's only in a situation where the bride and groom are particularly concerned about timing. I try to catch eye contact with the speaker. Now, if the situation is happening with your MC, then thankfully there's another song coming. And during that song, I would just approach them and suggest that the bride and groom would really appreciate if you stuck to the script. Thanks so much.